Hi everyone, Sean here from Extra Techie, and in this video, I want to pass on some lessons learned that I experienced while running some Cat5e cable for a network project. In this video, I'll demonstrate some network pulling tips and tricks, some hard lessons learned, and my overall experience and advice for any novice pulling cable in the future. As always, if you found this content helpful, go ahead and like the video, leave a question or even your own advice about network pulling, and subscribe to the channel. Let's talk about the project first. This summer project involved several phases over two floors of a school building. In total, over 24,000 feet of cable was purchased to run network drops for the following reasons. Data voice, access point, and digital speaker lines were installed in each room. First, I needed to remove the existing cable. And to do that, I had to carefully scale ladders, remove ceiling tile, and cut away cables that were not needed. Most people will run new cable along the old cable, but I chose to be thorough. If you plan on doing this, expect this to add more time onto your project. Removing cable is time consuming. The bonus though, is you do get scrap cable to do with what you want. The next tip is to estimate your cable carefully. A hard lesson I learned was not having enough cable on hand and having to wait for more cable to arrive, which delayed the project. There were many long cable runs, especially on the third floor where an entire ethernet box of 1000 feet was gobbled up by one room alone. That's almost 250 feet for each pull. There were three rooms at this length, so the amount of cable that I had to use was staggering. One of the tremendous pitfalls that I encountered while working on this networking job was working by myself. I often would have to go up and down ladders several times to pull cable through different rooms. In this case, I'm pulling cable into its final destination room, which is where the second floor rack lives. Earlier, I installed those silver J hooks and I'm carefully running the cables through the J hooks to keep them nice and separated. This bundle of four cables includes an access point, a data line, a voice line, and a digital speaker. Measuring cable is pretty simple, but when you're by yourself, it can be difficult. Every 10 feet, I would put a piece of orange tape on a cable so I know exactly how much cable I need before I install it into a room. In retrospect, I learned that there are measurements on ethernet cable. Lesson learned. The longer the cable runs go, the harder the cables are to pull because of friction. In this case, I'm using my hammer drill to drill a small hole through this brick and plaster and whatever is behind this wall in order to run my cables into the next room. Sometimes you just have to make your own access ways. Something I wish I did from the start, hire help. One or two extra people on this type of job helps tremendously. Once the cables are pulled, someone has to terminate them, test them and finish them off. While the cable is being pulled, someone else can do the terminating. Otherwise, it delays the job. When you're working with a good helper, the cable runs become more efficient. As you can see, my helper and I were working efficiently in this room to get two cables to the middle of the room and two cables to the corner of the room where the teacher desk would be stationed. When working with a helper, use two ladders to leapfrog each other while you're pulling cable. This 
type of strategy allows you to pull cable in the most efficient way ever. Doing so will not only help you in the long run, but you can work together to pull the cable as the cable gets heavier and heavier the farther down the hallway you go. Finally, invest the time in tools. You will need cable pulleys, cable fishing sticks, loads of electrical tape, gloves, eye protection, a headlamp, a hammer drill with a very long bit, as you could see, an impact driver, J hooks, eye hooks, screws, anchors, scissors, razor blades, and just a go bag of random tools you may need. Some advice I got from others while doing this job as I was chronicling it on TikTok is the use of zip ties. From what TikTok tells me, the best practice is to use Velcro. In this job, I did not as I was not aware of the difference between the two at the time of the video. But to this day, everything works very nicely. Thanks for watching this video. I enjoy passing on information from experiences, and I hope some of these lessons can save you time in a future project. To see where these cables eventually get terminated, check out the Lesson Learned Network Rack video. There are more tips and tricks to be learned over there. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.